Welcome to Peloton Homecoming. I just found out that this is my seventh homecoming, which I was very surprised at. I know, I know. I think I'm about to celebrate seven years. So um, it's very exciting to be part of this community and to see the things that we've built together and how far homecoming has come. And I'm ex super excited to jump into this pride panel with these amazing people. Um, you know, I love that Peloton is a space where we really celebrate diversity and different types of people and different backgrounds. And that means this special rainbow coalition of LGBTQ plus IA people. And I love that we create a space for everyone to feel welcome. And I think that's what's so important about myself and all of my amazing colleagues is that we kind of represent a little bit of everyone out there. And I hope that everyone out there who takes our classes feels and feels seen and feels connected to the instructors and how they represent themselves and the stories they tell because storytelling is such an important part of this job and what we're building and the legacy that this community is creating. Um, I'm excited to jump into these questions and really just like get into it. Um, we've got Jess King here, the beautiful and talented Jess King. <laughs> so What's Jess, up you guys? Yeah, no, um, so much of what you're saying resonates. And I think what, what has been the most profound part of, piece of being part of this Peloton community as an instructor is that, you know, we can show up exactly who we are and that's safe and it's celebrated and it's encouraged to dial it up to discover, you know, what's underneath of that. Is there more? And then, like Cody said, tell that story because it's through that that we find connection, that we find similarity and we realize that, you know, we're all kind of vibrating the same and after this one thing, which in a meta level is love. And so that's why I'm really excited to be part of this pride panel. We um, celebrate pride 365 days a year, hence the outfits, we're ready to go at all times. Um, but we're really excited to be having this conversation with our incredible members today. These are some really, shiny, bright, loud, proud, and beautiful human beings. I'm very excited to get to know them on a deeper level here in this chat. Um, so I wanna let them introduce themselves, but um, Mark, Jake, and M, why don't you say a little bit about who you are and then we'll get the conversation started. Awesome, yeah, I can start. Uh, so my name is Jake, hi everyone. Uh, Jake Reha is my leaderboard name. I have been a member of Peloton since 2016 when my husband convinced me that we needed the bike. And I, I did not think that we did. And I immediately fell in love, like immediately. Um, and uh, yeah, I've been, so we've been, my husband Brian and I, we've been together for 11 years, married for five. And we have two dogs, two Australian Shepherds. We live in Florida, sunny Florida. And I have a favorite Peloton moment. I have a couple of them actually, uh, but. Mine was a couple of years ago that I can think of top of mind. I had PR'd uh, Cody and DJ John Michaels live pride ride, and I have been trying to chase that PR ever since. <laughs> yeah. Fabulous, fabulous. Well, I'll go next. My name is Mark. Hello, everybody. You can find me on the leaderboard and on Instagram at Mark underscore art. I'm coming to you from the sunny and fabulous Palm Springs, California. Uh, I'm a relatively new Peloton member. I got uh, my bike in September, joined in August of last year to get rid of the COVID five pounds I had gained from stress eating and I fell in love immediately uh, um, with Peloton. I have so many favorite memories and moments as well. I think some of the best workouts are the ones where you don't even remember putting in the effort because it goes by so quickly or you're having so much fun, like Cody's recent live DJ ride where there just was so much laughter and kiki between you and John Michael. I literally forgot I was working out. Um, I think <laughs> my ultimate favorite is the Jess King experience. And I'm not only saying that because you're here now and I can tell you uh, personally, but my gosh, I miss dancing and being in a club and your series, Jess, just was the perfect escape from a chaotic and stressful world. It's a true celebration of our uniqueness and love. So thank you for that. It's really my ultimate favorite memory um, with Peloton. Thank you. I'm very touched by that. Thank you so much. 
Hi, all. I'm really excited to be here. My name is M. Um, my pronouns are they, them. I am a member of the Peloton Pride community um, and hashtag, um, and I identify as a non-binary bisexual person. Uh, my leaderboard is M and Den. Um, so not super creative, but you can tell that I live in Denver. Um, <laughs> and I've also not been a Peloton member very long. Um, I, I started this summer and have really uh, talked everyone's ear off ever since and kind of dived straight into the different social media uh, communities. Um, so for my favorite Peloton moments, I would say it's it's a tie for me between, um, I eloped on Halloween. Um, and so doing a live group ride with the Reddit community and like being able to get out those pre-elopement jitters. Um, and then, and it was just really wonderful. Um, because I'm also, as you can tell, a huge fan of Halloween, um, but as many LGBTQ members are. Um, and then the other one would be um, doing the five hour simulation Halea Kala ride that Christine did and, and actually doing it. Um, wow. So that was really awesome. Wow. Well, you also have another hashtag that I just wanted to shout out that you ride under. Yes. The uh, Latinos. Yeah, Pelatinos. <laughs> and I'm Pelatino. very proud member of the Pelatinos group and yes. uh, really, really uh, love them for the incredible and positive Facebook community um, that they have. Same thing. Okay. Um, Cody, awesome. do you want to jump us into some questions? Yeah. Um, well, A, I mean, A, thank you all for being here. We're always excited when we get to connect with, with members and share members' stories. And it's so... It's, you know, it's very bittersweet. Usually we're doing this in such a large collective during this weekend and we get to hear so many different people's perspectives and the things that they bring to the bike and the community. So I'm glad that we're still like encapsulating that in this little tiny group. So I'm excited to share all of our stories since we all kind of come from different perspectives. Um, so Pride obviously is a month away where it's my favorite month. It's uh, Pride month and my birthday month. Uh, well, my birth, you know, my birthday day. I'm not the girl that, that does birthday month. Wait, yes, <laughs> yes. We're both June, right? Um, I'm end of May, so May, May 29th. Okay. We're both Gemini. We're both Gemini. We're both Gemini. Um, so it's about to be Pride month, but you know, like Jess said at the, at the, right before we jumped into this, like Pride is 365 days a year. Mm -hmm. Amen. And um, I'm interested how this group expresses that or shows that in their daily life or what are those special moments beyond pride where you show up authentically and you show, celebrate who you are within your within the Peloton community or within the communities that you occupy in, in, in the places that you live. I can go. Uh, so go, Jake. Um, uh, I think for me, and this has been a journey, um, is just self-acceptance and being able to talk about like my husband, Brandon, you know, years ago, I would have never offered that up in conversation when I was meeting new people. And now like through time and just courage and self-acceptance, like now when I meet new people, I strive to like introduce him as, hey, and I have a husband and his name is Brandon. And you're using those specific words where, you know, before I just wouldn't have had the, the courage to, to say that. Um, and not in shame, it's just, I think, uh, gender identity is just a complex topic and, and process that you go through as a human being. Um, and so I think from that evolutionary standpoint, that's that's something that I strive to do and it's something that I've evolved into doing. I, I love that. And I think uh, what is so awesome is breaking those nor normalizing those sort of things is like just saying like this is my husband i think that normalizes it and it becomes it makes it less and less obscure and i think the same with m um introducing introducing themselves with their pronouns like that is something that normalizes that conversation and you know makes it less and less obscure so that it just becomes like not even a blip in the radar so i think that's a, that's an awesome perspective mm -hmm. Yeah, I definitely had like a pretty similar experience to, um, you know, it wasn't every day that I would, um, it, it was pretty recently that I felt comfortable like telling people my pronouns up front. And um, my current job um, is one, 
it's the first job I've ever had as an adult outside of college that I was very open about my gender identity through the application process. And that was um, a huge point of pride for me and, and a huge leap of faith too, because I think um, it was really, really scary. And I think in a lot of ways, um, you're still constantly coming out. But ultimately, mm -hmm. I think when it comes to how I live pride, 365 a days is that I try really hard not to treat any of my identities as a footnote and trying to bring my full self in um, to everything that I do. I, I do anti-violence work um, and my queerness, my gender identity, my Latinidad, like it's all of the different parts of me um, are showing up in that work every day. That's amazing. That's amazing, Em. Um, you inspire me just by hearing you uh, speak right now. And I, I really, really appreciate that. Um, for me and, and my identity, uh, Pride 365 means being my authentic self. I mean, as we've already heard, we've just, many of us have spent years feeling unworthy, less than ugly, a sinner or an outsider. And as the elder of the group, the panel today, I'm 49 years old. So I've had a lot more time and I've been out for, for decades now, but slowly but surely I've learned to not listen to the hate, to not allow mm -hmm. others to decide who I am and instead to forge my own path and love myself for who I am. And I feel it's my duty uh, to be a role model, to work hard, to live a life with integrity, and speak out against injustice and support our most vulnerable. Um, sometimes it's annoying that that behavior labels me as an activist. It's, you know, I'm not an activist. If you want to call me that, so be it. I'm really just a compassionate human being who cares about others. Like that's ultimately who I am and my identity. Wow. I um, am deeply moved by what all of you just said, we are gonna like try and keep the cadence of getting as much amazing information and questions out of you as possible. But you know, this is what I'm hearing, I can echo back is that just having courage, finding acceptance for yourself, speaking your truth becomes really powerful. And, and naming something, claiming it, calling it your own, and then bringing everything you've got to the table as a complete package. Like you guys think I'm kidding when I'm like, oh, you have to use, we don't half ass anything. We use our whole ass. This is what I'm talking about. It's, you know, that, that's like a cheeky little metaphor for showing up whole with the light and the mm -hmm. shadow and just being like, fuck it, this is who I am. Let's rock, That's right. you know? Um, so that's super exciting. Uh, we're, I, have a, so I have a question for you as well. So you, being that it's been a pretty long year, and our avenues for expression and opportunity for that have, you know, radically changed and shifted. But, you know, part of what makes pride, you know, the essence of pride is joy, right? It's the full celebration of ourselves, of love. And um, so I just want to know, like, how have you been able to create joy in this year, hold on to joy, protect your energy, you know, and then ultimately, everyone feels a call to action to some capacity, right? Like you're an act feeling like an activist or like working in these like organizations to unravel a lot of these things that get in the way of just seeing our, each other as like lovable beings. Um, so yeah, I'd love to hear from you how you, how you hold on to joy and how you create it. I, so one of the ways that I created joy this past year is it has been a really hard year and um, I was supposed to have like a traditional wedding um, or you know, sort, sort of traditional <laughs> wedding. Um, <laughs> and I decided to elope anyways, because if that was something that I could still celebrate in a really hard year, I could celebrate my partnership and my love. Um, and then I really try to share that with others. I work with students. And um, one of the things I always end most of my meetings with is like, what are you doing for yourself? What are you doing mm -hmm. for self care? How are you um, going to have a moment of joy just for you? Um, because you have so much, so many different responsibilities going on. Um, you can't pour from an empty cup. Yep. But for me, I create joy through Cosmo Fridays with RuPaul's Drag Race. <laughs> <laughs> Which, Keep it real. Keep it real. <laughs> Thankfully, this year was the longest season of RuPaul's Drag Race history, so <laughs> that's helped out. True, true story. That was what, what, what this was season thirteen, so season twelve last year. 
that it was like we did drinks on Friday night with with Drag Race. I would try something else. I would try something new every Friday. Some things were great. Some things were a hot mess. But <laughs> <laughs> I love that. No, but, but like in all seriousness, though, like for me, it's tough because you know you can go down a dark path when you have like such negativity. Over the last year, there's there was a lot of darkness that, that you could hold on to, and so. For me, it's just having really and like being very intentional when I'm feeling those moments of darkness and experiencing them to like bust out of that and say, you know, I'm not going to step into that because if I do, I know I'll be in there for a long time. And it's, what's your what's your vehicle to doing that? Um, it's it's literally just like a, it's a mood change. Like it's just taking a moment, breathing, and resetting myself and say, okay, let's just take that step into the right direction, not to the left, you know. Could I, would I add or challenge that that you can double down on that when you move also? Oh, totally. Like how has movement played a part in oh, in like sure. taking that that little toolkit that you have and just kind of like blasting it out? Like you said, breaking through, right? So last year I discovered for the first time Peloton out outdoor content, which I never really knew existed. Mm -hmm. And when we were in quarantine and we couldn't go anywhere, like fortunately I lived in an area where you could walk on trails and stuff outside and I would get my Peloton outdoor content on and I would go out there and Manny Majagmo like really kicked my butt and had some really uplifting gay music that I just loved and it was great. Amazing. Amazing. Mark, do you want to answer how do you create joy how do you hold on to joy oh yeah so um in my circle of friends um i'm known as the fashion person i really like to express myself through clothing clearly uh so i i find joy in just creating these silly photo shoots for myself um and i think it's just so important to just take those moments for yourself and do what you love. And my poor husband, I drag him around and he's my Insta husband having to take all the photos. Like I set everything up and he's literally the first photo in every one of them because I'm checking the, if this is the right background and the lighting. So every first photo, like all the outtakes is him standing there looking incredibly bored, but he does it because he loves me and I love him. <laughs> I, there was a moment a few years ago, for 10 years I ran this uh, fashion blog. And after the last president election, I thought it's so stupid of me to do this. There's so many more important things in the world to do. And I almost stopped doing it because I thought it was just a waste of time and, and then stopped myself and realized I'm honoring my own uh, creativity, my need to be expressive by continuing these silly photo shoots that ended up taking a, a um, somewhat of a political stance in, in the clothes I was wearing and in the um, narrative that I was telling through these photo shoots. Um, I'm not a professional uh, stylist. I don't have access to the fashion community. I don't even really know how to work my camera all that well, but it's just something I wanted to do. And for 10 years I did it and I'm so grateful. You just have to kind of find those moments for yourself and, and, and do it. Yeah, absolutely. All right, we have a live question. Do you want to you want to grab a couple of these, Cody? Oh, absolutely. Cody, what is your hype song to celebrate yourself? <sighs> what is your hype Man. song? My, I, yeah, I feel like I got this question the other day, and I, I, I like, I'm embarrassed. Like I couldn't find like the hype song. I mean, like, I guess I'm levitating by Dua Lipa. Every time I hear that, I'm like in a good ass mood. Like I was, I don't know where I feel like I was in like CVS the other day, and it was on. And I was just like. Pumping down the and the, every the remix of it too. Like there's so every, many. There's so every many. remix is so good. Yeah, I second that for sure. Does anybody else have another hype song that the world needs to know about? Oh, um, call me by your name by Lil Nas X. It's hey, really hard not to like sure. be all about that right now. Should we just stop this conversation and talk about that music video? For oh my second? gosh, <laughs> wouldn't be opposed. Okay, wait. I'm gonna tie it all in. So, Mark, you just you know, thank you for sharing what you did about feeling expressive and creating and like, you know, art and creation as a vehicle of understanding, expressing, emoting, working through processing um, what's going on internally, externally, the world around us and within us, you know, creation and being, 
you know, what I like to call is like a weirdo and just like celebrating and creating and making things and not even worrying about if it's good or not. Just like, you know, you're, you're called to that. All right. So how has the creativity of Lil Nas X really like, you know, pushed the boundaries, but also like personally, I feel like did us so proud. Like what an incredible, beautiful journey. I love, anyway, somebody else tell me what they think of that video and like what it means, what it meant. Oh gosh, it's everything. It's everything. Just somebody being their authentic self, even though there's knowing that there would be so much criticism for the content mm -hmm. or the message. He did it anyway. I was so inspired. I watched it on loop for hours on end. He's just an amazing artist and such an inspiration. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's really, really hard for queer men of color to find positive representations of queerness in the media. And so like, I really commend Lil Nas X for like making that space and making it easier for the next generation of gay rappers um, or any media creators to be actually themselves. I, I, I had a conversation with my with one of my best friends about this. And I was just like, no one's dropped something like that. That's had like such a mark and like made a statement, like probably since like something Madonna did in the nineties mm -hmm. with like, just like being so in your face about it and like making you think um, it was a, it was a, I'm like super proud of him. So I, I it's going to be like such a pride anthem this year. It's like, I was like, girl, wait for the remixes. They're going to be all yeah. over the clubs. It's just like nothing but that song. Yeah, Jake, I'm here for it. Jake, did you have a, did you want to lead us into the next question? Sure. Yeah, I can do it. Um, so this will be for the group. So besides accepting and including, what can an ally do to best support the LGBTQ plus community? Um, I think one of the biggest things you can do is um, like radically accept someone and show up for them as they are asking for you to show up for them. I think there's often this idea that like you have to show up for someone's identity the way that you think that looks. Um, and really we need to actually be talking to the queer folks in our lives um, and making sure that you know, we're in touch with what different communities are actually doing and talking about and making sure that we have spaces that are safe to come out in to begin with, because it's, it's, it can't be more, it can't be like reactive. We have to be really proactive in making sure that, like I said earlier, like queerness isn't a footnote, right? So um, normalizing language like partner, asking people for pronouns, those are all things that make it easier for people to say, hey, this is actually who I am. Thank you for seeing me. I love that. I actually lead a employee resource group at work and it's, you know, identifying uh, members of the community and allies and uh, surprise, not surprisingly, I guess, but we have more allies than we do identify members, which I absolutely love. And one of the things that we talked about over the last year was, you know, what does allyship mean? And, and, and is it one thing or is it a spectrum of, of sense? And, and we talk about it as a spectrum, you know, some people, early on in their allyship might just say, well, I have a brother who is gay and that doesn't, I don't, that doesn't bother me. Well, that, you know, you're an ally. And then you can grow and evolve that over time to be more active within, um, you know, participating in events or marches, et cetera. Yeah, I totally agree. I think even for me, I think so someone can show up as an ally by doing the work, like rolling up the sleeves and doing the work and processing, uh, processing the, the feelings that arise w when you're with cer certain groups. I think like even in myself, I've had to process that over the years when it comes to maybe like internalize like biphobia or transphobia and be like, well, if I'm around, if someone says I'm bisexual, why am I thinking this or why am I feeling this? I need to sit with that and process it on my own. And also with like trans community, like why am I thinking this? Why am I feeling this? I need to go and do the work and do the research and then like, figure it out on my own so that I can show up and be the best ally for those communities. I really love that, Cody. I just want to say, like, I think that discomfort is really where that growth actually happens. Yeah. So love that. I think, like, I think as being mem members of the community, we need to give the grace and the space for them to go through that process and not judge them if they're getting something wrong, right? Like, right. Knowing that's that so challenging. I, that, that's super challenging just because it, like sometimes we want to be like active or like 
the responses that happen to us. And that's what I'm saying. Like, and I hope me saying that, like, I'm saying that, like, I've had to deal with those two specific things and process them on my own as a member of the LGBTQ yeah. plus community. So someone who's not even part of the community, I'm sure it's even more of a struggle because we come from a certain perspective. So I hope, I hope that inspires people to like do the work and, and sit with uncomfortable feelings. And I think we learned that. And I, I, I know Jess and I speak about it all the time in our workouts. It's like, when you're feeling uncomfortable in a workout, that is a perfect practice for the rest of your life. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the work can look different for everybody. It can take a different amount of time. Um, I remember feeling totally out of control when I came out to my mom and, you know, we were like best buds and she was rocked, flipped upside down, could not figure out what just happened. And there was this moment of dissonance and that was like deadly to me. I was like, no, 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 get figured out, do the work, it's right in your face, do it now. Um, and I'm relentless. I'm like a dog that just like won't let go of the bone. And, but, and fortunately, you know, I press and there was a quick evolution, a quick return to love, a quick, but it, but it took me being there, trying not to be super reactive or just hold the space for the conversation that needed to happen. So it was my work at the same time, but also, you know, it's the work of the, of the people that whoever we are innately is provoking, right? Like if you're showing up in your wholeness and you're saying, this is who I am and that provokes somebody, okay, that's indication that they have work to do. You have a choice to hold the space, be there for the journey, figure out a way to communicate and like, you know, again, return to love or, you know, we don't feed the trolls. Like, listen, yeah, totally. it's like <laughs> with all due respect, love, like seriously, like, we have to protect our energy. We have to focus. We have to be around resonant vibration. We have to feel home. We have to have our community. And, you know, so it's been, it's been, it's been beautiful for me. I, I love um, this space. I love representing this community. I love representing femme women in this space. I feel like people are very confused about that. Um, and so it's nice to just to begin to like dissolve these things that other us when we're really, we're just saying, we're just, we're all here. Mm -hmm. Like, so, um, yeah, I just, I'm grateful that it's been so beautiful and welcoming and inclusive to be part of the LGBTQIA plus community. And so as ambassadors of that, you know, Cody, I'm going to speak for you, like, we feel a duty, a responsibility to hold that space, to represent, to be loud, to, sh to show up. I know for me, that looks like getting creative, right? Like dedicating a whole episode of, of, the, of the Just King experience. Like I had an opportunity to have a say in my creation. I'm like, well, we're gonna celebrate the hell out of this. You know, we have a right to joy. Let's talk about it at this random month of the year because pride is more than yeah. just one month a year, so. Yeah, is there an M you should ask a question? Go for it. Yes, um, I and I just love the idea of like choice and like making the choice to take that journey with someone versus not feeding the trolls. Um, I think that's so important. So just wanted to echo that. Um, but um, our next question from, I believe this is from the live chat is, um, favorite dance move to express yourself or do you have a pose that you like to do? <laughs> Okay, well, Mark, we clearly want to hear from you first. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I'm old school, so, you know, Madonna, Vogue team will always do it for me. Live. Love it. Always you know, I, I always go to my, my, my solid titty shaker or body roll, so. We've noticed. <laughs> <laughs> me, never. <laughs> I think I either like slap my own ass or break into like a little salsa. Just like those mm. are my like, and like maybe both at the same time, you know? <laughs> I have no rhythm. I've even tried to get Stop. the moves on the Jess King experience down, and no, I can't do it. <laughs> I have no rhythm. Cue I'm music. Let's go. Cool. Come on. I, yeah. No. <laughs> I'm partial to merengue myself. There you go. See? It's on the hips, baby. Yeah. <laughs> um, what, okay, fun fact about Mark is that 
do you mind if I share this? It was in your little description. You are an Olympic figure skater. Oh, not Olympic. Two times. Okay. I, I am a gold medalist, but gold yeah. Gold medalist. Yeah, yeah. Or <laughs> that's why you love a costume. That's yeah. why yes. look. <laughs> that all makes all sense. Up there. There. And and you're training for an Ironman, is that correct? Oh, shit. Nice. Um, yeah. So when I turned 40 nine years ago, I did my first marathon and my first triathlon. And so the past few years I've been thinking, can I be as physically fit, if not more, when I turn 50 next year um, than when I was in my when I turned 40? And so now I'm registered for an Ironman. Um, half Ironman this year. I'm using my Peloton as part of my training to do a full uh, Ironman next year when I actually turn 50. So yes. Awesome. Work. Incredible. You're all very inspirational. I mean, Jake, thank you for starting um, the Facebook group, for rallying the community together, for being the heartbeat of that. Um, and it was so nice to meet you. Welcome. I know you're kind of new to the family. Thank you for being here, Mark. Um, <laughs> you are unforgettable <laughs> is, and it is just that you know we don't often get to see who is riding with us unless you guys are tagging us and things or whatever so when we get to like see who it is we're talking to who it is we're creating for what 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 we're trying to do together when we see the faces and we learn the stories it just it feeds that and it fuels that and it also just feels really good to see your faces. <laughs> well, I do want to, I want to say thank you to you both. And I'm sure you guys hear this time and time again, but you are unapologetically unpo yourselves. And that, especially for the LGBTQ community, does such powerful things. And it's so encouraging and it's so, and it's just, you guys are both breath of, breaths of fresh air. Like it's amazing. Well, thank you. That's very kind. And thank you all. I, I, I double what, what Jess says. Like, it's so great to just, see the see people's faces that we're creating for and to like come together and speak so thank you thank you all so much so so much thank you all thank for your you. time today. all of our friends who joined us bye y'all <laughs>